once again welcome back with another video lecture in this video lecture we will investigate and focus on bacteria that live in human body in different sites known as normal flora before starting the normal flora we must know about some microbial interactions so what is microbial interaction microbial interaction is the association of two microorganism with each other they include symbiosis symbiosis is the relationship between two different species so there are three types of symbiosis number one mutualism common cellism and parasitism mutualism is the interaction between two microorganism in which both partners are benefited the example is mycorrhizal association this association is in between plant and rhizobium bacteria plant give protection to rhizobium bacteria and in return the rhizobium bacteria fix nitrogen for plants this mean in this relationship both partners are in benefit when the benefit is in turn exchange for food or nutrient then we called it syntrophism next comes common cellism common cellism is a symbiotic relationship in which one partner is benefited while the other is neither benefited nor harm let me give an example how some fungi degrade cellulose which may which many bacteria are utilized so in this case the bacteria are benefited while the fungi are not benefited nor harm then we have another symbiotic relationship which is parasitism in parasitism one partner are benefited while other are in harm for example plasmodium is a parasite that cause malaria in human in this case the parasite are in benefit while human are in harm now let's discuss what is normal flora the human body is colonized by a vast number of microbial population known as human microbiota or normal flora about trillions of bacteria are colonized in our body and we can find them in various location such as in skin mouth lungs intestine and urinogenital tract in a healthy human about 10 times more bacteria are present than human cells human and their normal normal flora have symbiotic or mutualistic relationship which mean human and bacteria work together and benefit each other and depend on each other for survival the human normal flora is mixture of microorganism which mean they include bacteria fungi protozoa and acellular agents like viruses etc there are that are regularly found at any site of the human body like skin respiratory system git or urinogenital tract under normal condition the human microbiota are harmless and may even be beneficial now we have two types of normal flora that is resident normal flora and transient normal flora the human normal flora are usually not pathogenic but they all are opportunistic pathogen which mean it will cause disease in immunocompromised host the resident normal flora are present inside the body which mean they are permanent body flora in resident normal flora microorganism are regularly found in given area at a given time while transient flora are present outside the body it is derived from the environment and does not cause disease the transient normal flora are present for a short period of time then disappear in interval the transient normal flora do not interfere with normal body function 
it consists of non pathogenic microorganism that inhibit the skin or mucous membrane for hours or days now let's discuss major normal normal flora of the human body they include skin as we know that skin is the largest organ of the body the microbes living in or on the skin can be either transient or resident microbes most of the microbes living in superficial layers of the epidermis as well as the upper part of the dermis the skin normal flora are streptococci staphylococci micrococci diphtheroid bacilli lactobacillus species and al candida albicans which are fungus and skin the largest population of microbes are found in armpit and groin region their habitat depend on condition they require for growth for example oily moist and dry skin then we have normal flora of the upper respiratory tract most of the aerobic and anaerobic microbes invade through oral cavity and nose and nose staphylococcus epidermidis and staphylococcus aureus are the predominant microbes the respiratory tract do not have normal flora for long time because microbes are eliminated from respiratory tract that is from alveoli bronchi and bronchioles by the following ways first the mucus is generated here continuously by goblet cells which entraps microbe the respiratory tract is covered by ciliated epithelial cells which continuously move the entrapped microbes out of the respiratory tract second alveolar macrophages destroyed these microbes by phagocytosis but anyhow some opportunistic pathogens are present this means this bacteria does not cause respiratory disease in healthy individual but they cause disease when the host is immunocompromised or their immune system is weakened and thus the normal flora bacteria get opportunity to cause disease lactobacillus haemophilus influenza bacteroids and candida albicans are also normal flora of the respiratory tract then we have mouth mouth is the normal flora for streptococci nigeria bacteroids lactobacilli and candida albicans they are non pathogenic bacteria until oral hygiene is maintained when there is poor oral hygiene these bacteria can change mouth ph by a process fermentation these bacteria utilize carbohydrates and produce lactic acids which leads to dental demineralization and finally cause dental plaque dental caries or dental cavities then we have normal flora of the intestine normal gut microflora are dominated by anaerobic bacteria but also some facultative anaerobic bacteria are found in intestine they are a more than 1000 species living in gut here are some well known species that belongs to our guts they include bifidobacterium eubacterium e coli bacteroids enterococcus and yeast the gut microbiota has been shown to absorb nutrients they help us metabolize our food and they provide us essential growth factors just like vitamin b12 and vitamin k then we have normal flora of urino genital tract the upper urinary tract that is kidney ureters and urinary bladder is usually microbes free but in both male and female at the tip of urethra contain numerous skin bacteria the female genital tract are shorter than male which have more complex normal flora and are 14 times greater risk of UTI than males also the vaginal epithelial cells produce high amount of glycogen that 
lactobacillus bacteria degrade to form lactic acids thus their pH are in between 3 to 5 here are some bacterial fungal and protozoan species that normally present in urinogenital tract that is E. coli, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Lactobacillus, Clostridium, Candida albicans and Trichomonas vaginalis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment.